Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, June 27th meeting of the Planning Committee, Buckingham Town Council. We've got quite a full agenda tonight, but we're going confidential at the end of it, so we're going to get through as fast as we can, bearing in mind. Um, it's already 8.15. But before we start that, uh, we have a public session, and we have Robert Webb and Jenny Harris here tonight who want to speak about the Bentel um, planning application, which is on the agenda. So you have 15 minutes between you, so whoever would like to start, please do. If you could just stand up and perhaps come up a bit this way so you can be seen on the, um, on the screen. That, that's absolutely fine there. Yeah. No, we won't take 15 minutes, don't we? <laughs> Thank you for letting us speak this evening. My name is Jenny Harris, and I'm the agent for plan application 22-17-1-APP, for free dwelling set at Hill, London, and Griffingham. The site sits in between the buildings at Bent Hill Farm and the edge of the Lace Hill Academy Community Centre and is within the settlement boundary. The access to the site is, is an existing track leading from London Road, which runs parallel to the southern boundary of the Lace Hill Estate. There's extensive landscaping focus on both sides of the access track. On the site, there is an existing barn. This would be demolished and replaced with three dwellings. They would be detached two story properties with four bedrooms each and a detached double garage with living space below. The house would be built in brick and would have traditional pitch roofs with plain tiles. The garages would be finished in two bedroom buildings. There would be three parking spaces for each property, including an electric charging space and a visitor park. New landscaping will be introduced to the site, including new trees and native bedrooms. Consultation response has been received from the Lake Local Flood Authority, which has requested further information, and this is currently being prepared by the applicant's drainage consultant. Similarly, minor queries have been raised by the highways and ecology offices, and we are in the process of responding to these. With regard to residential community, the proposed dwellings would be set towards the southern end of the site and would not result in any loss of life, outlook, or privacy for neighbouring properties. The traffic noise resulting from free dwellings would not be significant and have a lower impact than agricultural vehicles that have used that previously. There is a construction company controlled by commission. The proposal would redevelop this small scale windfall site in a sustainable location in accordance with policy HP7 of the Aiden Plan and policy D3 of OPAR. The proposal would make a small contribution towards housing and survival. The site is bounded by existing development on three sides and there is a wonderful boundary to the south, which will be planted with new landscaping. The proposal will comply with the requirement to provide 10% by the to If you have any questions regarding the proposal, we can have to answer them. Thank you. Mr. Webb? Just here to answer some questions. Really. Uh, I'm one of the owners of the, the site. I live with my brothers. Um, it's been farmed for years. Um, it's, it's really an area we can't use anymore. Uh, we actually access the wide agricultural land from um, further towards Calvary. Um, so we have to keep the gates locked. We get a lot of people just trespassing on it since the late of development. So I just think it's there to be. So the, what we're looking at is a brownfield site, isn't it? Basically, it's, yeah, yeah, it's it's a known, it's been used. It's yeah. got a barn on it. It's got scrap land, so yeah. it, is, it is a brownfield. Yeah. It's not fresh green open space, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and it was used to store machinery and hay and machines there now. If any, the committee got any questions, please. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh wait. Councillor Harding? Um, yeah, um, just one question. Um, is there going to be solar panels on the buildings built in from the south? And also great water recycling. We're very keen on that the new builds should have that built in and not have it added later. But it's a lot cheaper to build it, but it's good. Yeah, so we're aware of the policy in the neighbor plan for the rainwater recycling. So each property is two water butts on each property are marked on the plans. And they can be secured by conditions as well, so they are incorporated into the plan to comply with that policy. Um, they don't know some of the panels. Would you consider that, I guess, would be the question? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, these times are yeah. 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 rather yeah. Yeah. rising costs. Yeah. We can look at yeah. I don't know the houses, if, if they were to go ahead, it would be built with the latest regulations, the FAA, the entire house, they're quite efficient, then it's cheap. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Councillor Davis. 
Um, so I'm just looking. I'm just looking at um, the Google satellite image of the site, and it would appear that currently the field to the back of the the, um, the proposed houses um, goes around in a loop. So that would be taking off the corner of that agricultural field. Am I right in thinking that? So that's that. I'm seeing that. That's. Would that be correct? Time. It's not quite. It's not quite. But it may take so a that's, that's may that. Take a tiny corner that. of the field, a tiny corner. But yeah. that's that's coming along straight along here, isn't it? That's coming from that straight along there, isn't it? Is it not? I think it's, yeah, it's probably just a bit higher up. It's just a bit higher up. I mean, it's quite open. It's just it? open. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and just what I'm saying is part of it is is an agricultural company, so you need to change this for that part of the field from agricultural to uh, domestic dwelling. Um, this is a full planning application. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, with members' approval, what I'd like to do because our speakers have been waiting since seven o'clock, <laughs> we could bring forward that application. We'll simply just done the. Uh, Apologies and declarations of interest. We could then hear it. No, I'm declare I won't speak to the chairman as to myself. Well, we are getting, we're, we're getting to declarations of interest for us. Yeah. So, if you care to wait, we'll, we'll discuss it. Please take a seat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, is that an agreement? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Right, there's no other speakers. So, let's just start meeting officially. First of all, apologies for absence. Um, over. Councillor Gaby, Councillor Thank you very much. That's noted. Um, item two: declarations of interest. Received declarations of any person or prejudicial interest under consideration on this agenda in accordance with Local Rules Act 2012. No. Councillor Stutchbury, um, I shall speak. I'll present again. Yeah, the others, as you well know, I sit on. Um, uh, thank you. That's all with you. Nobody else. In that case, we will jump ahead to. Um, item six planning applications. It's number four on the applications. Uh, as you heard from Mr. Webb, this is a brownfield site. It is also within the Buckingham settlement boundary, so it meets everything to do with the um, Buckingham neighborhood plan. We do encourage development on brownfield sites. Um, it's the erection of three detached dwellings of garages, car parking, drainage, and landscaping. There are currently four objections on the planning portal about it. Two of those come from um, Bent Hill Cottages, number one and two. One comes from Silk Way, uh, the other side of the proposed new road. And the other one comes from Bobbins, Way, which is actually the, the householder is the other side of the school, so a long distance from this. Highways have given their okay, provided the entrance road is widened 10 meters back from the A413 Aylesbury Road. The Ecology have raised a question about uh, badgers. Is there any evidence of badger sets? Apart from that, um, there's very little more to say. Um, Councillor Donoghue. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm happy to go with the um, application. I think it's nice that, um, you know, a local landowner has recognised that there's, um, you know, there's space there that can be utilised. And I also appreciate the fact that they came, he came tonight um, for us to ask any questions, because we say this often, that, you know, we only wish that people would integrate and, you know, come and have a chat with us. So, um, you know, I appreciate that a lot. But yeah, I'm happy to. Have we had a second? Thank you, Council Martin. Back into Saturday. Thank you. Um, yes, we obviously looked at this, and in principle, we, we certainly approve of the use of land with three dwellings. Given its um, edge of town status next to rural um, agricultural land, we would have liked the design perhaps to reflect more of a rural agricultural nature than what appears to be quite um, sort of town centre. They resemble houses that are in Buckingham, that's for certain true. Perhaps um, it, not with the 
some of the current buildings at Bent Hill. I'm thinking of the, the barn there. Um, that's our only real comment, is that we would have liked to have seen something with a little bit more affinity with the agricultural side of views. Thank you. Councillor Tron. <clears throat> the access road, uh, I see it has a little blip probably for a, park, uh, a passing bay. But um, beyond that is the bridal path, wasn't it? <coughs> bridal way. No, I don't feel Right. End of that question, then, Chairman. So, one more point that we, uh, uh, we noted, and I was reading the um, highways report, and although they're not concerned with refuge, they did point out that it's quite a long drag to pull the bins. I think it's over 30 metres, and um, it should be 25, and maybe that's it's resolved, but... Um, 30 miles, I was 25 for bin now. Oh, 25 for bin now. And they're not poor little things, yes, yes. They have to go out to walk from one house. True, true, true. Thank you. Does anyone else have any comments on this? No, we're going to propose and second, so we'll put this to the vote. So all those in favour of, of approving this application? Just to be that. With the, oh, yes, with the exception, yeah, with the exception of um, Robin Hussain. So thank you very much for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that will help. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to get through Buckinghamshire Council now. So. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, from what we've seen on, on all the comments, the Buckinghamshire Council you know, is inclined to be agreeing with us. So. Good. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good, let's get back to the on the agenda. Uh, minutes to receive the minutes of the planning committee held on the 6th of June. That's been set to lift everyone. Everyone happy to pass as a record? Thank you. Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan, available as a plan, Buckingham Shalula, or plan to receive the information, the answer to a follow up question from Councillor Stutchbury on the Buckingham Shalula Plan. It is Appendix A on here, but um, Robin, if you could just um, yeah, I, I hope you've read it. Um, what it basically says is that they're not in favour of uh, having any uh, over scrutiny of the Buckinghamshire plan. Um, they think they can do it all through a um, broken infrastructure committee, which um, the Buckinghamshire plan, I think, would probably feel more than one meet the broken infrastructure committee if you want to do scrutiny of it properly. Which means they haven't actually got any intention to solve. If you read the written question, um, <coughs> response to the written question at the moment, yeah, the people who are talking about it are chairs of committees, cabinet members, senior members, and not members. The last time that Buckinghamshire councillors actually were consulted about the Buckinghamshire plan was 2020. So they're really inclusive. Um, so um, where do you go with that and how would you use? Use that information. Um, buy beware would be the first thing I'd say, and uh, stand by your head because if we're not going to be consulted, um, if your Buckinghamshire your councillors aren't going to get a say, what hope is there? Everybody else having to say, and um, they, they put out a press release the other day saying how many houses it sat and the other, but they can start this public via media, not talking to the elected members. This is a real concern uh, because up and down the county, there are members who have experience and knowledge about their area which should have an input. Not to select for your people who have to be on the kick of the controlling group, I think. Yeah, so certainly it is a worrying response. Thank you very much for asking, raising that question, mm -hmm. Robin. Um, so, as you say, where do we go from here? Anyone got? Happy. Well, I think where we go from here is we check the legality of the on the approach they're taking. It strikes me that to develop a local plan has got to be an inclusive operation that involves reasonably deep and wide consultation from a whole variety of people and not just a few press releases and a few kind of very serious um, survey on Peter on the website. Um, so what I would propose is that we ask the town clerk. Um, or the town planning officer or somebody to, 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 to just check on the law of this and report back to our next meeting. Thank you. Everyone okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Robin? Just uh, if 
from the town clerk, the town clerk will the town um, the written response to the last agenda. It's got the detail of the question that needs to ask, which the response is in the detail of it, which support what I've said. And I think I think you'll find that they can pretty much legally do under their constitution what they want the people that we need to ask the question. I'm talking about national legislation. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that's where you're going, but I think it's but I, 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 we've got so many bits of memories. We can ask the question and be sure that we're. Um, it's it's a stayed under a slab question. Not a, we don't miss the target. Sheena, was our naval planning officer. Have you got a, have you on this? Um, making copies notes to, to check. Um, I would say that there is probably a set formula in the same way as we have for the neighbourhood plan that creates a consultation at the different stages of the development of, um, which we need to go back on, um, which we will have to do. But I suspect there's a certain amount of discretion as to how that consultation exercise, as long as it is open to the public. Um, I don't know whether the law actually specifies when uh, members of the own council have to be consulted, I suspect it's much more related towards the public consultation in terms of, of national law, but I will check for the committee if that's what Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's helpful. Anyone else any comments on that? Right. Item four. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Who are you? I'm sorry. I read it. It was going to be an online survey. And that's exclusive. Mm -hmm. Imagine in the rural area. Yeah. yeah. And we need to know that there's going to be facility for people to do it on paper and take them both. Right, thank you. Um, can I just follow up on sure. that? Sorry, I don't want to delay. Um, I think probably Catherine was right because um, obviously Buckinghamshire Council is sort of one of the leads now on uh, the national government's um, desire for online resources, etc., in relation to planning and consultations. So, yeah. I, I, would support that and I would double check on that. Thank you, Shana. Thank you, Kathy. Um, item 4 2 Buckinghamshire Council local plan to receive a request for input on the design code. That's um, Appendix B. Um, Shana, again, would you like to expand on that? I would. <laughs> <laughs> I would simply say that obviously our neighbourhood uh, working and uh, neighbourhood plan working group um, and particularly Roger Newell have uh, produced um, a draft design code which I think we're going to hopefully push forward as um, part of the neighbourhood plan but yes we'll probably be looking to uh, put that forward as part of the consultation plan. Thank you. But Karen, of course, Roger represents the Buckingham Society on the Neighbourhood Absolutely. Plan Working Group, yes. so you're happy to... Yes, I mean, as I understand it, it's, um, this code uh, is only going to be covering certain elements of uh, what you might call communal design throughout the county, and not the local distinctiveness that the Neighbourhood <coughs> Plan will attempt to get pushed through properly. Yeah, we asked that very question when we had the um the, the forum on, on neighborhood planning and then we were told it, it would be a general plan and local areas would still have their, yeah. their own exactly. input for and I think that is recognized for local vernacular. They're yeah. not going to have a one size fits all no. so that there are certain elements that might be included, such as street design. Mm -hmm. well, I'm skeptical about that too. But it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, such a big problem. It might be worth. Um, we've had lots of. We've had a change of cabinet member in development mm. since we last couple of months. Now, the council have been struggling to now the cabinet member to develop. So, I think it might be worth. You will remember, I think you probably remember when we all had knowledge of what we did, what we did, the mail. 
around the plan and the, the way that worked, and the fact that we asked to have it in our local plan and design code. Um, I mean, Buckingham design codes. I think that's something that might be quirk to our favour in the sense that we won't be talking to someone who didn't know about it. And we'll be talking to someone who's doing planning in the district. So, so we're not getting someone who know our area. So that might actually be a good thing. We might not like what you said, but at least we'll know what we're saying. But to be, would I suggest that we um, we seek clarity from him over how he believes the design code is going to work and how we reckon this response to work. I think so that when we get him right and then he says, um, we should remind him of all these other things. People say, oh, yes, I remember that. And then we might just, um, our first conversation might be joyous rather than um, not. <laughs> and he might come back being my friendly and say, yeah, I recognise that. I, I support that principle. And it's case for it. Oh, yeah, there, aren't we? Thank you very much. Um, Action 43 Buckinghamshire Council Local Plan. Now, this is when they do want us as a call for sites. Um, and uh, a consultation, which is now beginning, we're looking for allocated sites in the period of 2040 to meet housing and economic development sites. They're looking particularly at brownfield sites. Um, as they say, that, that, that is now open from the 13th of June, two weeks ago, until the 11th of September. Although sites submitted after this may still be considered. This is quite alarming in the sense that the first time that they, they know that we're doing a revised Buckingham Maple plan, and they've just asked us for sites. I would imagine that our Buckingham Maple plan would offer them a substantial way of looking at the site rather than. Have George is still over there, Fred's over there and Bill's over here. Because we know that we're going to have some work done to be able to work. We know that that in itself is going to offer challenges in itself. And if, if the road is where it's supposed, could nominally be, which is along the route that it established, that brings loads of problems for residents along that route in the sense that it will challenge. Um, the green area between their properties. Um, and, you know, and if the road is put in, maybe that offers solutions about discussing about where sites are going to be. But this idea that we should offer sites blindly, we're not a parish, we're a town. Um, we have a neighbourhood plan. We're not offering a, a, an orchard at the end of the village. And, and this is inappropriate. And if we can write back and say that we're happy to work with the, the neighbour. And recognise that we've got a transport link um, um, changing in Buckingham, which is a major consideration. And, and we want to work with them constructively on site allocations around those elements about the committee, because that's a whole discussion. We can, someone could make the neighbourhood plan by just offering sites on the most commercially viable areas for them personally. Against what is the most viable area for the long term viability of public. So, but this, this approach is not the right approach with Buckingham. They should have wrote to the town clerk and said, We're looking for you to work with us on site, not on your Buckingham made plan, which you know you've got and you've got history. This is true because, like, uh, like Hamlet, uh, we're not Hamlet, uh, we're the largest area of town in all Buckingham, Sheer Park, and we're going to be larger than Harvey. And, um, because I hate to think it's still in that. The email has gone to local parish and county. Yeah, I know it's gone to the parish and county, but I think they should have communicated us differently to this because if we don't respond, right, what's stopping anybody saying, well, we recommend that site in Buckingham for planning and they're not in Buckingham? What's stopping them? Well, they've already done that with well, us. So. I still, I still think it's a challenge to us, and if we've got this road likely to be changing, which they haven't actually agreed, um, they're still waiting to come back to solve this properly on it. So, um, I was having a little challenge about this because I am. <laughs> Karen, Buckingham Society, you um... Well, I mean, 
I think anyone with any common sense would agree that um, cool to site depends on transport. Um, I mean, the whole NPPF is predicated on sustainable development, which must revolve around transport. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a, in, in, well, this might be, it's a bit more sort of cart before horse race. Really. <laughs> Um, no, just for me to echo um, what Catherine was saying is that, yeah, it's communicated to parishes, but it's also communicated as well to owners of land, yeah. and they are free to put forward sites to um, uh, Buckinghamshire Council, regardless of all our neighborhood plan, etc., because they're looking forward to being included in the, the Buckinghamshire plan, which will also proceed neighborhood plan. But just following from what you said, Karen, of course, what we saw happen when there was a call for employment. So that's what we sent for Westcott and, and uh, Silverstone. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, John, hi. Um, it's, worth, it's worth looking at the map to see what places have already been mm -hmm. dealt in the town. And um, one includes the, um, the area towards the end of Stratford Road before the roundabout. Is where some houses uh, and include some green spaces in in Page Hill there, as well as um, the Ford site. You know, with the, I mean, the, the, the Ford garage site. Um, not unsurprisingly, the site uh, where there's the village merchants and the Potter Works, um, the Innovate site, and there's another part of the of the industrial estate off the Dindry Road as well. So a variety of spaces. Oh, the car park. <coughs> Um, yeah, I think that's the car park. Actually, it's, it's the University Car Park off Fourth Street, not the Port Garrett site. So, a variety of places which I wonder where they picked up from anyway. So, would it be from our neighborhood plan? No. Um, for instance, the Tindrick Road site is the other half of Tindrick Road industrial site that's in the neighborhood plan and not that, um, that area. Yes, I have had a look at the map. I'm not clear as to whether that has in fact sites that have already been put forward um, by owners. I thought, I thought it had yeah that's that's my the red lines around them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I suspect that it is actually sites that have already been brought forward to the Buckinghamshire mm -hmm. Council um, as being available. Thank you Shane. Um, we can move on um, to see also agenda 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's okay, so that would be at the end of this meeting. Um, action reports. We have the list in front of you. Just a couple of things I will raise. The first on page one is speed limit Tendrick Road. Uh, as you will all recall, this was usually announced on the 21st of June when the six week consultation came to an end. Do we have any? In the office about that. We have one that we've checked traffic in Birmingham. It wasn't yeah. in the paper last week, so the problem will be in the paper this week, otherwise we will probably start having we'll, what's happened on that. As in, we'll be the last to know. Yeah. They, they don't, the, <laughs> the website does actually show it as closed, but uh, there's I'm fairly certain we will change the video if you have time to have a go to see the paper. You know that. Which we're doing diverting footpaths. Um, um, I think the decision was deferred on the 13th of April um, um, and it wasn't taken forward on the 13th of April. My memory is that it went, it went deferred to an outside independent consultation over the actual findings. That's what I think it said. Um, so it's not gone away, it hasn't been determined because it was deferred. So that means there's still work going on, which is good in our sense. I think somebody else is having a look at it, not, um, not the people we met, um, whatever. So I think that's on the decision notices of the council. Um, I will find that tonight and I'll forward it to the office, I think, because it's in the public domain. Um, that's where we are. So it isn't gone away. And, and the idea that someone can what happened last time was people didn't read it correctly, like the chair did, uh, and uh, people did. Uh, and it was announced, I think we were very careful about it. Whenever we get an announcement at this point now, we want to make sure that the announcement is both correct, correct 
accurate and correct. I don't think it was deferred. I haven't gone back to them because I presume that as a local member, they might be good enough to consult with me um, when they finished it, and they haven't done that yet. So I can go back and, um, and follow that up. But I think I'll call the decision notice for the office so that they've got it. Um, um, Thank you, Ron. I've been really helpful. On the second page, Ozil Way, uh, Town Clerk Open Discussions on Section 106 terms. That's on January at the end of evening. But before that, Claire, we've got this bit about Buckinghamshire Council um, trying to persuade the developer to transfer land there. Which yeah, is that, that's basically Paul's very quick summary what was put on, on the agenda for the level. I couldn't actually see it in there going through, so I don't know. I think that, that's basically what he's. Yeah. yeah so we'll deal with that when we get there. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And the final thing I, I have to ask um, here of the tree, we're waiting for information from Green Spaces. Right, the press release has gone out, so that's been done. Um, we're trying to sort out the insurance company reps in the meeting that's ongoing at the moment. Um, I'm leaving it looking into whether we can get corporate membership of the Blue Trust, but they are. There's some trees and there's some communication with the government trust ongoing at the moment. Thank you, that's very helpful. Um, anything else on the action list that anyone would like to raise? Yeah. Right at the end, the last item, just, just to remind you, July the 18th, we will be having a presentation in Law Homes about the triangle of the land between the A421 and the old Portland Road. So, that will be the gender item, so that there will be a presentation. Is it? So I can miss me. You can sit there. You can sit there. Thank you for that, everyone. Right. Yeah, you can. Well, planning applications. Um, as you know, we've already dealt with number four. so. Number one is 55 Broad Street, household application for extensive refurbishment operations, uh, very much for the whole house and the installation of the last barrier. It is a listed building, it's one of our finest buildings, as you know. Um, and I think, Carolyn, if you'd like to start the ball rolling with that, how Buckingham Society views this? On 55 Well Street. Yes. Yes. Um, well, but firstly, the, the information given by the applicant rather fills one with confidence mm. because it is so comprehensive. Um, I don't know the internal layout of the building. I think one of our members had been in there yes. and, and reported that it was in quite a state, yes. particularly after the recent floods and so forth. And, and the previous owners haven't done anything with it, obviously, for, for a long time. But we are basically delighted that they're going to replace the blank windows with windows. And what they are proposing to do seems to me to us in keeping with um, the conservation area, um, at the same time making the house into a livable accommodation for 21st century. Um, the flooding issues obviously are not going to go away, but they have made some provision for them. And we assume that they've been consulted with the flood defense um, the Environment Agency, and um, as long as historic building officer is satisfied, we would not object, we rather welcome this. Yeah, I mean, I think you've all seen the photograph Catherine posted on page 14, which shows how soft we did to mm -hmm. at the time of flooding. But uh, you mentioned about the windows, just interestingly, from members' information, just in a side, this window tax came in 1696. And if you have more than 10 windows, we've charged 10 shillings. For each extra window you had, and that wasn't actually repealed until 1851. So, which accounts for so many of these houses of this period still having these bank windows. Been there a long time, then. Gosh. <laughs> it's a little history lesson. Nice. Um, no comment from Heritage yet. Uh, Buckinghamshire Castle Heritage on the portal. Yeah. Uh, Castle Trump. Yes, I'm, <clears throat> I was just like about the society, very pleased with the application. Um, <laughs> I still have a, a sort of a, a warped sense of um, an idea on the uh, flooding wall, because um, all that 
does is stop it coming into their property in Mexico or elsewhere. Other sites in um, Well Street, the water comes in one end and it goes out the other side to dissipate it. We're, of course, putting a wall there would just make it go elsewhere uh, and not, you know, yeah, it, it takes up some of the flood um, area that it could overflow into. But, you yeah, know, we've all got to uh, build our castle, haven't we? <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm happy with it. So what members feeling generally? John? Sure. Um, yeah, I think it's obviously as all this. I, I, again, I'd, I'd say maybe picking up on what Martin just said is that we encourage them to grey water recycling and subject to listed building status. So, thank you. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. So, we'll answer yeah. in the affirmative and Catherine will also make a note depending on comments from Heritage. Yes, yeah. thank you. Um, that's two together because the second part is a listed building application. Um, number three is 23 Deerfield Close. This is an old friend coming back. This is the yeah. extending the property uh, towards the back, which is slightly higher than the properties behind it. Um, the new application shortened the extension by only one meter. It's still the same height. There's two objections, um, both from neighbors. It's going to have a quick look. Yeah, the neighbor. Um, Thirty-nine Kingfisher Road. The neighbour said it's still as much the same application as was refused um, last time round. It was refused on May the 9th after we, amongst others, objected. And Catherine also dealt with an objection on behalf of someone who's not connected to internet, who said it would um, affect affect the enjoyment of the garden of the people there, particularly if they sold it later. She was concerned it would be paved, and there was a possibility of the second story being added at some stage when they came back. Um, the actual loss of garden is about 40% of it is going to go, so it will be eight metres long now. And neighbours behind on the first time round were concerned about the risk of flooding if the water ran off the back of this property down onto theirs. The members want to change early on this. Since last time when we objected. No, great. Seems, yes, thank you. It seems pretty much the same application, just sawn off a bit. And I <laughs> think the same yeah. uh, criteria apply, and I would oppose this. Yeah. yeah. Is that the feeling of the meeting? Agree. Yeah, Definitely yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so just on that point, um, I can't see any drainage um, uh, or um, guttering on the back. I'm assuming there could be, but you shouldn't ever assume. When you look at the side elevation, there is drainage uh, and guttering on the front um, bit, but nothing shown on the back. So um, there were, and the proposed elevation shows the upper been going onto the roof, but um, which would have gone into a drain, I assume, but maybe not. So, you know, that is a valid point from uh, uh, one of those objections. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that, that should be clarified, but apart from that, it is essentially the same item, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I was just going to say um, that on the photographs, it does look like there is going obviously and and, um, and the downpipe on the back of the property, but um it's not been shown on the on the drawings at all. But as it has on the drawing of the front of the property. Is that that's just unanimous and that uh, yeah. we continue to get to that. Yeah. Thank you. Um that's before we've done item five, 21 Pickenham Road. This is an amended application um, regarding the gate, the side gate, which we have wanted to clarify. Did they have the right to put it there? It's, it's on the other side of the outside. So they've come back that slightly modified. Although, Catherine, you say still some confusion over the. Yes, um, the application before showed zigzags which I took to be bifold patio doors and queried 
the disparity with the rear renovation, which had a window. Mm. And I was told that you could have five old windows, and that's what they were. Now, the applicant has decided he wants five-fold floors. <laughs> but the elevation still shows a window. <laughs> so I asked the officer if she would just clarify this because when the decision sheet comes through, it will list the drawings and the revisions. And this is reverting to the last August's revision, and therefore they would have to build it as they had it last August if that's what went on their decision sheet. So I think we would get clarity on that. I mean, it's not visible to anybody, it's behind the wall. Um, and the shape of the extension doesn't change much. They just decided that perhaps it would be easier to get into the garden through a door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a try. Uh, sorry, I, yes, I, I, I misheard you. I thought uh, it was in the garage they were having the <laughs> and the window. It's just a big space between uh, the house and the garage, and they were infinitely yeah, okay. extension. All right. So you can't really see it from outside. No, no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this house is 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 a landmark house, isn't it? On the corner, yes. so it stands out mm -hmm. because it's designed to do. Um, and the gate will actually come out through a pretty substantial door into the road. So again, it's going to be on view. And yet we have no uh, illustrations or details about the design of the door that they're proposing. And I would suggest that if we are uh, OK with this, we really should have quite a, a good quality door and a good quality design in keeping with the fact that it is a, land, a landscape building point. A good point. That's something we could raise with the officer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just adding to that, or the alteration to the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a cut out? Does it have a lintel across, or is it just cut straight down? <laughs> so it's again something we can ask for more clarity. Oh, you know, <laughs> if they come back and try satisfaction, we've got no problem with it. Mm -hmm. Opposed, but be minded to change your mind if you've got satisfactory drawings. That's probably yeah, sounds probably the same. Pragmatic solution. <laughs> <laughs> pragmatic or uh, post. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll do that. Catherine knows what you're doing. Um, right, item six. This is going to be the. Uh, Take some time tonight. This is Land Off Market Hill, West Street. Um, if I may, I'm just going to read out some. I've put together everything that uh, was raised and done excellent and very, very long. And we also discussed this afternoon. So, the previous application for this site was 17 dwellings in 2019, which Buckingham Town Council opposed and it was withdrawn. It's a windfall site for 10 or less dwellings, which Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan supports. But while acknowledging the Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan, BALC 2, and the National Planning Policy Framework, the Blenheim Design and Management DNA statement believes it's still dealing with Aylesbury Vale District Council throughout the whole statement. <laughs> it also disregards BNP Policy EE2, which reserves this site for mixed residential and commercial development. The NP policy DHE6, provision of good quality private outdoor space for residents to enjoy. And NPPF paragraph 64, which expects schemes of 10 or more dwellings on a site of half a hectare or more, which this is, to provide 10% affordable housing. And we have checked that is still relevant. Uh, that was raised, in fact, under the 2019 application. There's a number of issues raised by the local planning authority. The local lead flood authority said there's insufficient SUDS information. You'll see from Catherine's report, the site is prone to surface water runoff into the shopping areas. Uh, back into your council archeology, span wants a full investigation before development can begin. Being in a historic part of the town dating back to the Doomsday Book, it's also in the Buckingham Conservation Area. They did note there was, there was a report in 2019, which they said it wasn't complete enough. We also acknowledge we've gone a long way since 2019. 
Buckingham Council heritage is even more damning. Fiona Webb reports the proposal is not good enough to approve and to meet the statutory test, preserve and enhance the designated heritage assets, meet the government's agenda of high quality, beautiful, and sustainable buildings and places. The scheme is considered rather suburban in its form. Overall, it's bland and does not have an organic feel. It's largely underwhelming and lacks a design imagination. <laughs> Buckinghamshire Waste and Recycling says they need a 26 ton vehicle tracking analysis. They want bin storage and collection point information because it's on slopes no further than 15 meters push pull for crews and 25 meters for residents. 10 dwellings will require 20 bins and 10 food waste bins. And Buckinghamshire Council's <coughs> sustainability wants a further ecology statement, including biodiversity net gain before they will consider the application. Other matters which Catherine raised are the displaced parking and the 19 vehicles currently paying to park on the site. West Western Avenue car park cannot support more, and Summerhouse Hill is private with parking penalties. Access to the, the five Cobham Muse dwellings, which have parking rights. Retention of the right of way from Summerhouse Hill through the site to West Street, which the Applicant has acknowledged but doesn't mention in any of the design statements. The other thing Catherine points out is the height variations across the site. And finally, the Section 106 agreements mention only education. Should we now be pushing a health provision? Sorry to be so long, but that's that's been encapsulated everything that Catherine has uh, put together. Thank you for that, Catherine. John, yeah, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, I, I'm amused by where they think the car's going to come and go for. Um, and it just feels a rule of development. Yeah. Yeah. Can't sit try. <clears throat> it's just picking up on the transport. Uh, we can confirm that they're going to go from, well, 19 earmarked designated. Based on that, there it's like to 40. Is that right? No, there is room for 40, but quite a lot of them will find themselves planned. The 19 paid for days are now labeled for the users, quite for the CAB. Yes. And then so when it's been developed, how many? Um, there will be, if there's 10 houses, I think 15 days altogether. Okay, so slightly less than we've got at the moment. Uh, plus, we've displaced the 19th class of the estate. Well, yes, yes. No, where I was coming from was if it's going to increase, um, uh, that is a no entry at that point. They shouldn't be going from Wells well Street into that area. They go, they go from West Street getting through number six. Sorry, West, uh, where, uh, okay, they go through the, the, uh, the, uh, the arch. Like. No, 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 that would be dangerous. Further along West Street, before you get to the old advertiser building, there's quite a wide entry that has a big yard at the back where the old Top H building used to be. Yeah. yeah. And, and they go not around that way. And, and then they can go across to the oh, park. I see that. Yeah. 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 It's okay. not, it's, it's, it's a tight turn. Oh, yeah. That is. Um, and yeah. yeah. Particularly as I've you see, I've, I've actually looked at all the planning applications for the bond conversion and. <laughs> Conversion and the parking that they have stated required with the those applications, and it doesn't leave room for the um, anything to turn, yeah, you know, yeah. delivery or any, uh, so. Of if I might continue on that, why isn't that entrance then from West Street um, in the red line? Is it not there? No. No. Okay. So it doesn't that. mention it, but that is what the estate agents cars use because I watch them do. But no, they don't come through the archway. It really is not a nice. But if that isn't theirs, and they develop, they could develop it with. Well, uh, if, they, if, if they're going to say that the people will come from the post office directly yes. and go in and then come out and go to West Street, um, they've got to think about bin day when there will be ten randomly placed bins in that area. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly, yes, yes. But, yeah. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, I think, yes, 
echo everything that was covered in detail, Mark. One of the important mentioned perhaps was the, the no authorization, they will need authorization from Anglia Water for sewage disposal, which they haven't mm -hmm. got. And at the end of the day, you think, well, this is a brownfield site, and it would be nice to see it in, in use. But um, the amount of conditions that is going to have to be required to make it usable, you think mm, maybe it just should be turned into <laughs> recreational parking. <laughs> <laughs> the conservation area, they says that it, it does a disservice to the conservation area, it is, but this is not the solution. No, and I we totally agree with everything that is said. She says it very succinctly and, and great articulation. Um, and then my other basic point is that the new chimneys. Then that's Buckingham Design. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. We have that. <laughs> so, what's the feeling of the meeting? Opposed. Can we have I think we'll have a vote on this one. So, okay. so proposed by <laughs> Councillor Harvey, seconded by Councillor Ralph, who shot his hand up first. All those um, in favour, we, we propose this application. And calling. Uh, and calling, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, they're just part yeah. of the major application. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's um, that's yeah. all in favour. Abstentions. Cuts. Up with no one against. Thank you. No, you can tell me the I mean, you can all make the right to the low commitment. So, low commitment don't have to be Customers who need cash can use the, the bank. And that's going to be a closing uh, in September. I haven't, I haven't uh, taken any notice whatsoever of that. Yeah, the bank will prevent any circumstances of customers. So, anyway, um, I, it's nothing we can really fight, is there? So it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Mm -hmm. so, no, no one objecting. Thank you. Um, number nine is. <laughs> Not the Brian Addington Road. And coming back, you've seen Catherine's pictures. The householder has made some effort to improve things after enforcement told him he had to take down, um, reduce the height of the wall. So he's put in a new application, um, which includes a porch, side screens, and a much, much lower wall now. The main problem continues to be that the wall is out of keeping with the, the whole yeah. rest of that side of Addington Road, which is uh, slope, it is picket fencing the whole way up. So, Councillor Harvey. Uh, I object on street scene basis. It's just inappropriate, destroys the line of the housing. It's awful. Even the reduced version. That's on street scene. Yeah. Yeah. Comments on Carolyn. Well, we think it is better, as undoubtedly a, a better solution, but it is still just really irritating, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Such an application should be put in because it is destroying the street scene. Mm -hmm. The thing ought to come down and be reinstated. Yeah. Um, it feels 
that it's uh, a lost cause in a way. And yeah. there must be something better that they could do to make it tie in with the street scene. At the moment, this appearance is mm. not good. Mm. Until further uh, efforts are made to make it tie in with the, its neighbours, it should be opposed. Yeah, one, one thing that you can see from Catherine's photos is a different version. There's a massive drop from the bottom of the yeah. steps <laughs> yeah. onto the pavement. So I'm yeah. glad yeah. they're going to get around that because that is the, the edge of their property. Um, so there's a lot of work to do on this yet, isn't there? But uh, Councillor Harvey has proposed we continue to object again. I'm a second for that. Thank you, Councillor Davis. And I'll start to speak on this. So we just do it on the grounds that we've mentioned it's still inappropriate. Yeah. Spoils the seats. So the right. They've also porches full width and but well, in actual this is taken yesterday morning, porches full width there, but it's shown put a slant at one end on the plan, so even that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, our final planning application tonight is 26 Mallard Drive. This is the only one tonight that doesn't have a hasn't had a yellow notice posted. Not the uh, no, no, no. They've got draft notices on the document list. No. All I haven't got is a date of posting. Okay. So only the first three have got the other notice. Right, actually got the mark. Okay. Um, this is again, we've already approved an earlier change to this. It, there's no building line in that part of Mallard Drive. Our Somerset back, some forward. Um, we didn't interject to the previous extension. This is just a modification on that extension. Is everyone happy in that? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, Item seven planning decisions. Uh, for once, everything that we didn't object to has been approved. And the only one that uh, is still outstanding is the windmill veterinary service, 1415 High Street, who's got four air conditioning units on the fascia. Mm -hmm. um, they've withdrawn the application for the moment while they're just sorting out how they need to apply for it. So that will come back to us as of today, Catherine says no. Yes, I mean, I also sat on it a few weeks before we advised me of it, and six days later it was withdrawn. So they could have noticed that it was the wrong situation. Thank you. Um, I have made Buckinghamshire Council matters, received news of Buckinghamshire Council, new documents, other information from Buckinghamshire Council members present. I think we've seen a lot of the documents. So, Robin, the board is in your report. Yeah, I'll just be brief. Um, the may be aware that that we spoke about um getting the Buckinghamshire Fire Party to change there. Um the way they operate to include um environmental risks onto the risk register managed to achieve that at the third meeting of the fire authority the new chairman was already and um managed to get that agreed. The masses of OT way um, I'll talk about that when it's on the agenda because it's let, let down. I am following up the A421. Happy day, spoke about that briefly. But when I've got more information on that, my main proof is about it, actually, about it is because at this point, there's going to be a document produced, which is a, a, a crazy of the works. And my, my concern is that that's got. To, that needs to come to the town council. The town council is the largest accommodation of people on the route, and the officer um, and I spoke with today, and he's hoping to come back to me before cabinet. So if come back before cabinet, I'm going to cabinet um, because I'm not having the, the council. Um, and um, not discussed and ignored, and they have to give you an explanation. Well, that would be so. 12. 12. Um, dentist in the afternoon. <laughs> 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 so, 
Thank you. Yeah, but anyone got any good. questions for our show? <laughs> Thank you very much for that report. I just stick to the plan. <laughs> um, the close of the term call has been deferred to the next meeting because we're quite busy tonight. Uh, Buckinghamshire Council Committee meetings, item nine. Uh, no Buckingham applications on June the 1st, nor are there any strategic sites on June the 9th. Um, the um, item 10, updates from representatives on outside bodies to receive any verbal updates from councillors. Anyone? I'm not a councillor. <laughs> um, I noticed recently there was an S1060 on, on Ozzy Away. Um, and Actually, we queried at Maids Morton the S106 on all that drive as to why the parish council wasn't being consulted on what it could put forward for sports and leisure. And a reply has been received which says that Maids Morton will have first refusal, but then um, if the council deem that uh, to be correct, we can have what we ask for, but if not, they will um, extend the largesse of S106 money to uh, projects within the Buckingham settlement. And Buckingham and Maids Morton are now part of the same settlement. Mm -hmm. And they seem to slip this in, um, in a very um, underhand manner. Uh, nobody, as far as I know, has been consulted in Maids Morton as to whether we are <coughs> part of the Buckingham settlement or not. <coughs> How has this come about? Thank you, perhaps. My memory of it, how it came about, goes back to the Mays Morton Road 1 application. The inspector in Mays Morton Road 1 found that there was no delineation um, or difference between Mays Morton and Buckingham. And the inspector recognised that that development, when we made Morton Road 1 got approved and Mays Contingent Road didn't, if you read the inspector's report, he made the decision that there was no delimited line between Buckingham and Mays Morton and it dates back to the approval of the first application. Did it really? And that's because my memory is that good. <laughs> and you go back and check it, it will say that. If you go back and get the documents out, because you were dealing with it at the time, you still got them, it will be the inspector's report um, and the findings of the Mays Morton Road. Just a little sentence in there, okay. was there? I don't know. That's where they're drawing it from. It was approved by an inspector in one instance, so that's carried forth with the legal. Remember, we're all objecting. Yes. Yeah. Once we've been together, we stay here together. Yeah, so that's where the only linear thing, it's not a pleasant thing to say, but it happens to be right. But I'm mean, sorry about that, but that's my memory of the fact, and it'll be correct. Parish boundary didn't change. No, no, because there was, the inspector didn't. Didn't see any when he agreed that application in Crystal Hill Transport, but he didn't recognize that there was a substantial difference with Buckingham Mays Morton. That's when we've been fighting because of that application. That's what we've been up against all along after that application agreed, even though there wasn't the second bill. But right. You, you go back and yeah, okay. Caroline, you'll we'll see that on the correct. It's a long already. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Anthony, I know there was no more. Fun. Parish no, consulting item tonight. Uh, there's uh, there's the AGM and obviously a general meeting next week, and I'll prepare a, uh, a short report and um, post it in as we agreed I would do, so that all councillors can read it. Excites them both. And uh, I'll slip away on holiday then and um, um, make sure I'm nowhere near when it hits. <laughs> <Very amazing. laughs> we can put that on the agenda for the next week. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Be good. Um, no, no others. Let's, let's move on to the item 11, Ozzy Away, which um, Catherine is leading on. Is your correspondence first with Philip Jarvis? Yes. Um, the, uh, the officer expressed surprise that we wanted to have input into the section 106 <laughs> because this is not a common thing. I don't know where you came from, though, but we've been banging about this balance for years about having some input. And 
We have since then seen, as you see from the actual list, that they're um, pretty well set in concrete and there's not going to be any changes. Yeah. Um, I know that there was a suggestion that some of us want the money go to Emerton Way. And I know that Mr. Houston was unhappy about that. Um, they, they, I mean, they say things like, well, there's got to be some playgrounds, and I'll tell you what, we'll put some extra benches around so that the old folk can sit on them and talk to each other. In the brain, you know, there is no community, there is no community hub for Tintwick Road, that's 800 houses on diagonally opposite sides of the road, that have got no community facilities, whatever, and nowhere indoors to meet. And um, they sell something about seven hundred. And the, I mean, the kids—they're not going to walk into school. They're, they're not going to be any community ethos at all because everybody's going to have to drive everywhere. Mm. Um, it doesn't seem to be there was a thing we can do about it if they're just going to find this, yeah. draw these things in vacuo down there without any kind of local input. How are they ever going to know what we need? Yeah. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, I'm just say that I the best that I met the developers and the subject. I also met with the council and said that I wanted town council to be party to section one oh six. This one is quite unusual because you, if you read the notes of our meeting, the developer would Determine beyond belief not to allow the town council to be involved in it, and and was there for the management group from the onset of the town clerk correspondence, and and they were resistant. So there was a long exchange here. I was at the Buckinghamshire council. I have gone back to I think go back and sort of raise my concerns about the fact that this. Town Council wasn't even sorted about the content of section 106 before it was agreed. I think that is something that cannot be impressive because um, though it includes the things in there that we wrote to them about, so they, they would say that they took place into consideration, says correspondence with other people. But what we have got here is a proper linear conversation. And what I cannot ascertain is the way they seem to be right to sexual relationship agreements is, and I don't think it's commonplace in other places, but if they were the council were taking land on in the days of the district, they would write themselves into the sector one exit agreement. If we don't take the land on, there would be a management company. So what they're writing into these agreements is management company is thirst to yeah. fall, and so to the developer to decide whether they want to pass it over to us. I don't think that's right. I think that is, um, that prevents parishes, prevents the town. So they're really making it really difficult for us to do. So I would suggest that we need to seek some advice and look at other, because I believe other councils are doing it differently. Uh, but I think we need to find out that that is the case. And then we need to go back to them and say, why is it that Buckinghamshire Council is operating in favour of the developer's choice, not the local people have an opportunity. But it can be broken into the effects, nothing. If they write into the development saying, um, if the town council don't take it on or the parish don't take it on, it'll go to a management company. Yeah. At least that means they've got to talk to us in the third place, is it? Because it's got this business that they don't talk to us in the third place. Is And OG Way was, because when we were dealing with OG Way, I believe the council were objected to it. Um, and it went to it really go to the normal committee, it went to the strategic development control committee. Councillor Patrick Green proposed it was agreed, um, and it was carried unanimously. So we didn't even get the local members discussing that application, even in that committee, or like making reference in the committee saying, Well, I think that could we take that into consideration? That you look in, um, you can't object to it because it's going to be asked the uh, town council to use so it can take into consideration. That didn't happen. So, what we got is local member 
proposing it. No suggestion that that was a group in committee because they can take that under what they have correctly as a word for it um, when they you know terms or whatever. So that could have been done there. So it's been a design for the mindset, and we're going to live with it. And and the poor people who, who move into that have got no amenity. And the idea I didn't tell them when I met the officers that you can't actually use Embleton Way because it's got a government on it, so you can't include it as a contribution. So I don't know where we go. I think, as I was proposed, I said earlier, that we find out what other councils do, mm -hmm. and then we go back at the next meeting, discuss that, and then when we discuss what other councils are doing, then we write back to them saying, well, if North Hampshire can do this, if Oxfordshire can do this, if Milton Kings can do this, and Hertfordshire can do this, why is it Buckinghamshire Council is I think we need to be sure about that, and then we can then we can ask them to change the way that they're writing and agree with Section 106 so that these things give the community an opportunity. Because in this instance, the developer is so determined, it's almost like the developer got the development and and then shut the door to the community. But they're not doing something for years anyway. No, no. They haven't talked to us. No, it started well, but they, um, well, we had their consultations and they've eventually agreed to our 35% of the housing, but since then it's been very quiet. Yes, they've always been very blocking. Yeah. And, um, yes. um, it's patronizing, it's not consulted. It's, yeah. it's, it's saying we know best, we just do what we're told. Yeah. Yeah. So, Carolyn, Fran, and then Lisa. Mm -hmm. I was just going to point out the ignorance of geographical location in the way in the education, which they say primary school education will be at Mates Morton and Buckingham. And clearly, half of the um, state is proposed to be in, in the Gorkhead Parish. I mean, it seems to be totally irrational. Equally, they haven't worked out that Gorkhead's not an infant school, it's a junior. And the infant schools in Tindrick, which is quite a small walk. Yeah, all of that just goes to prove yet again that lack of local knowledge and geographical positions of things is, is to all our detriment. Thank you, Fran. So yeah, thank you. Um, I was I was going to speak on on the um, Maids Morton and Buckingham Primary Schools. Maids Morton is an infant school that right. goes up to the age of eight. Um, so. <laughs> And then is a feeder school for Buckingham Primary. Um, Buckingham Secondary, I was at a meeting um, at last week, and I was told that they are currently having class sizes of 32 children, and they have a waiting list. They have children that want places at Buckingham Secondary, and there aren't enough places there for those children. So how is that going to get resolved? Um, just building more classrooms or whatever isn't going to do it. It would have to be another form, it would have to be seven forms of entry rather than the six that they currently have there. Um, saying that, there's also health provision um, isn't, um, isn't in there. Um, and um, I think we need to look at um, what's happened in Brackley, where they've um, not only they've built that, that new health um, care place, um, the new estate that they've built there has got a primary school on it and a hall, the Edgerton Hall in Brackley. If it can be done there, why can't we have it done here? At the time I joined the council, ABDC had a policy of not providing community centres on your estate. Anyway, at least after the next. Thank you. Um, yeah, what been saying about we don't want that to be a precedent that you know we're not included from the start with like taking on green spaces and you know, the management committee being just automatically um, put in. I think that is already a precedent because we saw that more mode. And Lacey Hill, Management Committee. Um, so, you know, we do need to, to get that conversation the right way around. But, yeah. uh, and it, I struggle to 
understand the logic of Councillor Feely proposing that I accept those UA with him knowing her feelings about it from the outset. And if he doesn't know what's in her and he made them develop a plan, then you know he, he's not as plugged in as he made out to his constituents when he was going up for election. You know, the poll perhaps being represented by local people and having a local person go against our wishes and then not included in section 106 talks. When again, he must know that that's that's been our wish for a long time. So um, yeah, I mean they can be on their own ward members for that I think we are against a structure that the plan demonstrates, like I said earlier, with the way they're talking to each other. Cuts the flower cuts, apparently. Now, I think the situation with the education thing, and it might explain it, is that. Buckingham Primary is, a, is, a, is, a, is an LEA school. Buckingham Secondary School is an LEA school. Um, the Gorkut School is an academy Round school. Roundwood. Roundwood Academy. And they've actually put the money to local authority schools. So <coughs> this is, you'll find that the last money went to any, the Latin school got some money out of Lace Hill. Um, because when they, when they were in the academy, when that money was agreed, now they're in the academy. I think it's about like one of these nice things about academy schools. And, and of course, when it comes to Mason School, it's the first school which was ever built in Buckinghamshire, so it wasn't built by Buckinghamshire Council, it was built by the, um, by the developer. And, 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 and they didn't have a say in it because it was an academy school. This is one of the lock on this academy education thing. But you are right that you think they make a contribution to someone, but as someone else said, Tindrick's um, where the older children go, and I uh, think the juniors are all whichever way around it is. But I'm very concerned what uh, Councillor Ali says about the 32 in the class at Buckingham Second School. I think that the fact that, that as a local member, I've not asked all that they brought up to 32 class. I just told you. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I know that, but it shouldn't be, shouldn't be so like that. And, um, and I should be writing to somebody tonight and um, asking for a reason for that. Because Buckingham Technical School is our secondary school. The grammar school is a regional education facility now because it takes people from such a broad area and it's counted as a local school. But, it's, it's but it, 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 if you look at the catchment, it, it's so wide now. Um, those local children go there, and the majority of the children go there won't be local children. That's just the result of the school. Mm -hmm. So we do need to see what happens. So maybe we should, um, on a side from this, invite um, commentary from Buckingham Secondary School on the local plan, because you will know that there is educational land on the London Road. When you pass the university, that triangle of the field is educational land. Um, um, on the other side of the road, that is still education land. Because Catherine was witness to a discussion once I had about the Yonkers Road when I saved it from being transferred to the academy. Um, it was an interesting discussion. Um, I shan't go into what was said. There is it, and I think we need to get that transferred into the match to discuss about what they're going to do because the second school we had is the new sixth form. Um, uh, like six-form college, and then it would make space within the school. Maybe that's what they want to do. But if we know that's what they want to do in our local plan, we can actually assist them, can't we, in actually planning for it, um, unless we had enough growth that we had a whole new secondary school outside of town. Um, but that's another thing. But at the moment, I think we do need to just want to happen. Thank you very much. For, yeah. we, we have rather drifted into the next item anyway. Sorry, Shane. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think Pran's absolutely right. We need to highlight the issue about health again. It's not included. Although, although I'll be sure we've only got we've got a redacted and not full document here that's been sent. Well, that, that's the next time. Jump the agenda. So we have judges, 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 and so on. And frankly, I think the gloves are off. I'm fed up. Utterly fed up with the Shire Council. 
ignoring the local knowledge. I've had enough of being schmoozy and nice to them and say, oh, please, please, please let us involve. I think we'll just take the gloves off and say, it's shocking that they're not involved in us. I can be shocking. Um, just a quick, quick point. Um, Roundwood School is a community school, which it says here, a community school in England and Wales is a type of state-funded school which, in which the local education authority employs the school staff, is responsible for the school's admissions and owns the school's estate. So it would appear that, that Roundwood School is an LEA school. Um, let, let's move on because we've still got the closed session tonight. Um, second part of those ways to receive and discuss the summary of the terms uh, by the clerk. We have sort of drifted into it, and as John actually just said, you know, they're treating us like children. Anything to do with money has been redacted. <laughs> Catherine. Yeah, I'm, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this part of the agenda was pointless, so I'm not going to take any suggestions mm -hmm. from us. Um, is there any point to in wasting time on it this evening? Probably not. To say that's the handover I got from Paul, my next save lost battle, wasting time. All right. I'll have them to get a press release and say what they've written doesn't even make sense. They don't even know that Hollywood is owned uh, by the local parish. I mean, other details, it's just sort of vague, back yourself, and it just points to officers not having a clue about the local area. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's about time that the local shire councils and town councils were closely involved in Section 106 and um, agreed because they determine the community future of various parts of government. We need to be strong on this and put out an acerbic press release, in my view. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to be quick because I don't think we should put in press release offices because council isn't. Running by offices, run by councillors. No, um, no, well, I don't think when the decisions taken in cabinet make decisions, it's, the decisions are supported by the cabinet members. Cabinet members make decisions to have that decision. If officers make decisions, you may end up with officers' decisions because that's the way the cabinet has chosen to run the council. The officers don't make decisions without the consent of the cabinet members of the cabinet. But it's, a, it's a political decision that that is the case. You may be right the way you're saying it, John, but it isn't. We should be careful how we um, how we phrase it around offices. They, they, they only take direction from political lead. Yeah. Yeah. Employees. So, Councillor Harvey has proposed that we do a press release. So, I have a second. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, who will draft it? Catherine. Yeah, trust Catherine. You have to write something yeah. along those lines. Okay. Yeah. Uh, after the quote, thank you very much, everyone, for that. So, are we saying at this point then we we won't proceed further mm -hmm. with the? Uh, that was one one thing, Chairman. I think we do need to talk from the highways. Because the um, if we don't talk to them, they put in what they put in um, for the section 106 is the highway is a, a, a nominal crossing on the Walworth Road, which children are going to all graduate from one end of the state to the other across the Walworth Road. <coughs> I must get up in the morning and go to Central, and I'll take a 350 yard <laughs> detour. To go to the school and take the longest possible route. Now they're going to go down um, through the industrial state and across by Aldi and into the railway walk. Or um, when they said in the meeting I met them, well, they can take it. They, well, that was planning meeting. They didn't know that, that it was a footpath around the outskirts of the um, estate. They thought it was a right of way, so we didn't know there was a footpath to lay seal. They thought we could walk around the back of their engagement. But do think we do need to carry on discussions about the, the highway thing, because quite frankly, if, if what they were agreed to do, um, with the new development, which is likely to, um, which is on the cards in the proposed area, that pathway down by Lily is going to be the way the children go. And I've been saying this for 
all along. And they were all going to cross that road at that one point. Go to school. No child is going to go. No child goes the long way. No way child goes the long way round, do they? I mean, that's something we that's that's need to bring up at the next meeting. We would give it more of an errand. But yeah, in the meantime, let's get this press release out. Um, yeah. thank, thank you for that, everyone. Um, item 12 enforcement. Any new breaches anyone wishes to report? No, thank you. Application to fell trees has been deferred to the next meeting. Matters to report any redundant signage to purpose damage. I did raise some about these yellow uh, construction signs. Yeah. Um, they've still got Nightingale Rise up after five years. They've got Manor, which is complete, is all the way along the bypass from the Bletchley Road. Um, Catherine's actually chasing people up to donuts. Yeah, and the parent technician says he can't do any more happen than the AAs, and he's giving me the contact. Um, that's, up, that's why they're yellow. Well, and they pay for them as well. Mm. Give them up. I think Patrick is on the end of the Is that Anglian or Anglia's <laughs> Association? <laughs> or Alcoholics Anonymous. Yeah. Chairman's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> items for information. I have an update of next meeting. It's Monday, 25th of July. 20 7 p.m. 2020. It's now go 